Welcome to Sugar High Guys. I'm PA David and I'm a board certified and licensed PA specializing in diabetes and Sugar High is your channel for relatable and reliable diabetes information that's always easy to understand. We're going to cover an important topic in today's video. Lately I've noticed that a bunch of patients in my practice have been asking me a very interesting question and I'm guessing that it might be on some of your minds as well. Almost every day people have been asking me, hey look David, I know that I'm considered high risk for COVID-19 since I'm diabetic, so which vaccine should I get? That is a fair question and it deserves a fair and complete answer. So let's get into the differences between the currently available COVID-19 vaccines and what you should do as a person with diabetes on this episode of Sugar High. Before we get too deep into this, I just want to remind everyone of the standard disclaimers. This video is meant for information only and is not meant to be a substitution for you getting actual medical advice from your own healthcare provider. I'll tell you straight up right now that you're going to hear me advocating for COVID vaccination in most people, but I'm well aware that it's not appropriate for everyone. There are certain people that should not receive the vaccine. I get that, okay? Your own healthcare provider, along with a series of questions that they're gonna ask you before receiving the injection, will help you to determine if COVID vaccine is not right for you. Now, I don't wanna drag this video out with a lot of extra details on why people with diabetes are more at risk for complications of COVID-19. If you're living with diabetes, I'm sure that you're well aware by now that diabetes puts you in a high risk group and that's not really news at this point. If you are looking for that information on how COVID-19 affects people with diabetes, back toward the beginning of the pandemic, I posted a video that covers all that information. So I'll put a little shortcut right here in the upper right corner if that's what you're looking for. This video is meant to help you answer the question of which COVID vaccine is best for me if I have diabetes. So as of the date of this video, there are currently three available COVID vaccines right here in the United States. I know that a lot of you watch from all over the world and this is a rapidly changing landscape in each country. So I hope that you'll understand that I'm not gonna be able to keep current on what's available in every individual country, including the one that you might be watching from. But even though there are different vaccine options in different countries, the concept of what I'm about to share with you, I think will still apply regardless of where you might be. The three vaccines currently available here in the United States are the option made by Pfizer, which was the first available. Then there was another that became available from Moderna and most recently the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Now, while all three of these vaccines have been shown to be safe and effective, there are some minor differences between how the vaccines work, how many injections are needed, and the effectiveness of each one, which I think is what tends to lead to the question of which vaccine is right for me as a diabetic. As far as how each one of these vaccines work, the main idea is sort of the same. For a vaccine to work, it needs to prompt your body to produce antibodies against the spike protein of the COVID-19 virus. Antibodies are sort of like handcuffs produced by your immune system. If you can make those handcuffs that fit the spike protein that you've all seen on the surface of the COVID virus, then you can deactivate the virus so that it cannot infect your cells. But in order to know how to make those antibodies, your white blood cells need to see that protein first. So the vaccines deliver the gene for the spike protein to your cells so they can start making the protein. It does not inject actual COVID virus into your body. But when you start making those spike proteins, which by themselves are harmless, the proteins cannot infect you, it just allows your white blood cells to see them and start crafting those antibody handcuffs to fit them. Then if actual COVID virus shows up later, you already have those antibodies, the handcuffs ready, and you can snuff the virus out before it gets a chance to make you sick. The Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine both are basically just that gene dissolved in a little fat bubble that your cells can absorb. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine has a slightly different approach. The gene is placed into a deactivated virus that can't make you sick, Again, not a COVID virus that they're injecting into you. And then that deactivated virus delivers the gene into your cells. 
then it sort of follows the same path from there. Since the mechanism is a little different, the dosing schedule is a little different as well. Both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines are two injections spread a few weeks apart. With the Pfizer option, the second shot is three weeks after the first one, and shot number two for the Moderna vaccine is given four weeks after the first one. But the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is just one dose, one and done. There's no second dose to worry about. All three of these vaccines were tested and studied very heavily before they were approved by the FDA. If you were to combine the three clinical trials testing the safety and the efficacy of these three vaccines, there were over 118,000 people that participated, which means that over 59,000 people received these vaccines before they were even approved for general use. That's a lot of evaluation and testing to make sure that these things are generally safe. It's not like they only tested it in a handful of people before rolling it out. Here's the part that's of particular interest to the sugar high audience, and I think the diabetes community as a whole. Each of these clinical trials included people with diabetes. In fact, in each study, about 10% of all participants had diabetes. Some of them had diabetes related complications and some didn't. So the diabetic population was very well represented in these studies, which is important. Since diabetic people are a high risk group in terms of COVID complications, we really need to know how well the vaccines work for those people and how safe the vaccines are in that group. Well, in all three studies, the amount of protection from COVID and the side effects, if any, was the same as in non-diabetic people. So when you hear about the effectiveness rates of each vaccine, you can be assured that those numbers apply to you too as a person with diabetes. One of the differences amongst the vaccines that seems to be getting a lot of attention lately is how effective each vaccine is. And I think this is where the question is probably coming from when my diabetic patients ask me which one they should get. Both the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines were 95% effective at preventing symptomatic COVID infections. And that's huge when it comes to vaccine efficacy. 95% is like amazing. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine was found to be 66% effective in preventing either moderate or severe infections. Now on the surface, that makes it sound like this vaccine is not as good an option, doesn't it? But to really understand it, we need to look a little deeper than just the surface. Overall, yes, more people who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine had mild COVID infections than people with the Moderna or Pfizer counterparts did. However, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was still 85% effective in preventing severe disease, and it was 100% effective at preventing death. Nobody in the clinical trial receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine died of COVID during that study. So think a little bit about what this means. Why is COVID such a big deal? It's a big deal because over two and a half million people have died worldwide from this virus. If COVID just caused a runny nose for a couple of days and that was it, like a common cold, we would have never gotten into the position that we're in right now. Thankfully, most people who get the virus recover and are just fine, but because of the fact that many people do develop severe respiratory problems and sometimes die, COVID is a much more serious virus than it would have been if it was just a common cold. So while the Johnson & Johnson vaccine may not prevent as many infections in general, it still reduces your chance of having one of those severe infections by 85%. That's huge. If you have the opportunity to have your chances of getting infected at all with COVID by two thirds, awesome, that's a great deal. If you did happen to get infected, if you were like one of the one third of people that still got the infection after getting the vaccine, but now you have an 85% chance of it being just annoying, mild to moderate symptoms, and then you recover, that's a great deal too. And the more people that get protected, the lesser the chance of encountering someone that might expose you. Now, of course, when I talk about minor infections just being a nuisance, there's still the concern of spreading it to other people. So don't get me wrong, that fact is not lost on me. But in terms of your personal health consequences, there's still huge, huge, huge benefit to having that protection. So what's the answer to our big question here? Which vaccine is best for a person with diabetes? Honestly, the answer is whichever one you can get. 
If you're eligible to get a COVID vaccine in your local area and only a particular version is available at that appointment time, don't pass on that opportunity. There is no wrong COVID vaccine to get if you have diabetes. I've heard concerns from several of my patients on both sides of the spectrum, and people often ask me if they should hold out for a specific vaccine option. Some people are concerned about the difference in the overall efficacy and preventing cases. Some people say that they don't wanna bother with having two injections, or they're concerned that a second dose won't be available when those three or four weeks have passed. Some people are concerned about feeling weak or achy or feverish after that second shot, and they prefer like a single dose option uh, from a side effect standpoint. But the best advice that I can give you is to make that appointment to get vaccinated as soon as you're able. As a person with diabetes, you should be protected and denying yourself access to that protection is not worth the delay. Any of the currently available vaccine options are good options and can drastically reduce your chances of experiencing a life-threatening infection even with diabetes. So I hope that this information helps you to feel comfortable getting protected from this virus and alleviates any concerns that you might have about one vaccine or another. If you've gotten your COVID vaccine already, let us know in the comments. We'd love to congratulate you on protecting yourself and other people. If you're still waiting for your turn, come back and let us know when you get a chance to get it. This is an exciting time and I think that it's a good thing to celebrate our progress together. As always, if you found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not a Sugar High subscriber yet, I hope that you'll check out my channel. Most of my videos are more geared like directly toward diabetes issues than this special topics video. But if you like what you see, hit that subscribe and the bell, and uh, you can be the first to know about new diabetes content as soon as it becomes available right here on Sugar High. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.